We're getting wet and wild on today's adventure as we jump into some murky, cold waters to dredge up creatures that folks either find utterly horrifying or fascinatingly beautiful. If you want to personally make sure animal species aren't disappearing off the face of the earth, then strap yourself in because you're going to love this. Thanks for having us here today. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, I'm happy to have these you. These are some prehistoric looking fish. These are lake sturgeon. They are a native fish to the Tennessee River and others in the southeast. They get up to nine feet long and weigh up to 300 pounds. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so can you feel how um, kind of spiky he is down his, with those spines on his sides and on his yeah, dorsal? Yeah, it's kind of a sandpapery texture. Yeah, they don't have traditional scales like a lot of fish do. Um, but they do have these spines that we call scutes. So, you know, they clearly don't swim away from, you know, things that could be potentially be predators. Uh, and they don't really have that fear because they are so protected by their thick skin and those spikes that nothing really wants to eat them, especially at this age. Do they have any predators? Um, when they're very small, you know, things like catfish, maybe some bass. Um, but other than that, it's really just humans. Um, and that was one of the problems that they faced in the 20th century, they were overfished for their meat, but also for their eggs, which we know is caviar. Oh, wow. Yeah. For an animal that lives to be 150 and that isn't even able to spawn and reproduce for the first time until they're about 30 years old, uh, to take that reproductive potential out of the pool is devastating. Wow. Yeah. My job is to reintroduce, particularly fish, to habitats that they're native to, but have disappeared from for various reasons. So you're like a proud parent, raising it, your kids and releasing them? It feels that way for sure. <laughs> How are you getting them to come to you? They're ignoring my food offering. Um, I think they know who their mama is, <laughs> uh, first of all. Although my peace offerings were rejected by the sturgeon, I was completely mesmerized by their ancient appearance and bizarre behavior. I'd never seen anything like them. It's kind of a mouthful. Whoa, come here. <laughs> He's dancing for you. I've met people who enjoy their job, but it became immediately obvious to me that Meredith was extremely passionate about her fish and her mission to get them off the endangered list. <laughs> Before we move on, I was hoping you could shed a little light on this photo here. This is uh, Terry Irwin. Yeah. Uh, in, I think, a, a bodybuilding face of some <laughs> sort. And uh, So yeah. that's really her. That's her. Yep, that's She's really her. She's got some guns on her. She does. Uh, she is obviously a... Um, a huge conservationist uh, and when we get the little surgeon in when they're like this big they hate to eat it beats all i ever saw they are the only animal i know that can starve to death laying in a pile of their own food so we try everything to encourage them to eat and finally we're so desperate that we just thought some body positivity would be warranted so that's why we threw that up there did it work <laughs> i think it worked yeah i think it did <laughs> Heading to the nursery, Meredith tells me about their native brook trout stocking program. They have found very good numbers of fish. They are reproducing, they are sustaining those numbers naturally without any input from us. And that is the best feeling in the world. But in some instances, her and her team are fighting to save fish on the brink of extinction. I like to describe it as like a really dangerous game of Jenga that we're playing with the natural world right now. The Barron's Top Minnow is a block that builds you know the entire tower that is the ecosystem and you know everything like the little darters and all the other little minnows those are blocks as well and right now you know in, in this mass extinction that we're undergoing we're pulling blocks out of that tower every time a species disappears and we don't know which block that we pull is going to be the one that sends the entire thing crashing down around us um, so you know we rely on all the interlocking aspects of an ecosystem just like everything else does. Before we wrapped up our indoor portion of this adventure, we had one more special fish to check out. Did you first come in contact with the daughter that changed your life? Um, so I was, uh, I was a wildlife student uh, at the University of Tennessee and we went on a field trip. Uh, you could choose between like elk viewing, bird banding, and fish shocking. And I thought fish shocking, that, that, sounds, that sounds interesting, that sounds like kind of fun. And, uh, you know, I knew about your sunfish and bass and catfish, you know, crappie, I grow up fishing for those. 
But um, when we started shocking up this little bitty creek and pulling out these beautiful tiny little fish, it was just a, a real eye-opening moment for me um, as to like what was living in the waters in our own backyard. And there's that really famous story about the dam that was halted. Yes. And it, it was because of a darter. It was. The little darter took on the huge TVA and a multi-million dollar dam and won. Uh, first time in history that kind of the environmentalists beat, you know, kind of the big industry. And it was actually some fisheries biologists from the University of Tennessee and other places in the in Tennessee in the southeast that led the fight. Um, so where's your shrine to them? Our shrine. It's, be a shrine. It's in my heart. <laughs> it's in my heart. They're actually off the endangered species list now. Wow. It's not a wasted fight, you know, it, you really can make a difference in this field. We just need more people to do it. Her love for these mysterious little fish was absolutely contagious and had me primed and ready to go when she said we were now going out on a fish finding mission to collect log perch. Go! Just keep your heart. Right off the bat, we started pulling up creatures from nightmarish hellscape. Oh, and be careful, there's a mad tom in here. No way. Yeah, so he'll sting, he's venomous. And they have poison glands at the base of them, so that when the spines puncture skin, those glands release venom, like a bee sting. So some species are parasitic, uh, and they use that suction mouth to get up on the side of fish and feed off their tissues. Oh, he's so cute! <laughs> now that I'd had my fun, it was time to turn it over to the pros. But even with all that enthusiasm, we were pushed into dangerous waters. Nothing! No, you'll get good stuff, but it's whether you can get them without dying. If it gets swift, uh, just drop the braille. Tear it up! Tear it up! Do your little dancey dance! That's when things got next level crazy, y'all. Uh, Ethios majesty, which is a blue side darter. What's amazing is 99% of the population can live their whole life and never appreciate the beauty of these darters. They're over there, just like no escape. No escape. Take no prisoners. Coddle peduncle. No, that's a bluey. Males! <laughs> oh, wow. We got him right where we want him. Drive it's like a rodeo. Yeah! Do it again. Is it? Is it? Who is that? It is. It is. Oh my god! Oh my god! It's a log perch. Oh, <laughs> That's what we came it's... for. He's science fish now. We had right, a goal, just... and we accomplished it. Uh, just... Okay. <laughs> okay I think um... it was my Alabama two-step. So you're going to do that again. And from then on, I was the Pied <laughs> Piper of Mysterious River Critters. <laughs> he eats all kinds of fish. Now I'm not sure if what they told me next was legit, but I reckon it lent us some luck for what we'd end up catching later. Tell me about this hog sucker. What most people don't know it's a tradition. is that they have a nice set of lips and their lips are very soft. <laughs> and everybody's got to... Everybody has to kiss the hog sucker. It's good luck. You have to kiss the first hog sucker that you catch, <laughs> and then you have to let it go. What does a yeah, bad day days. on this job look like for you? Uh, you catch nothing. <laughs> you flood your waders with really cold water. Yeah. You injure yourself. There's all, there's definitely ways to have bad days. But um, reason, our bad days don't compare to like regular jobs' bad days. No. Sometimes it's like I can't believe I got this lucky that like I get to do this. Like they, I get paid to do this. <laughs> Goodness oh, gracious. This one? Obviously, hog yeah, sucker. So he so has... <laughs> you can kiss him more than once now, don't be shy. Oh, see, he's puckering up. Yeah, he liked that. Yeah. Okay, there we go. <laughs> yes! Oh my god, okay, they're here, but they're hard to find. Um, <laughs> what did you just find? I don't know. So this guy right here, whose eyes are kind of sitting on top of his head, this is the coolest fish. This is called a stargazing minnow. Oh, what? I've never gotten one of those. It's a Phenocobius urinops. 
and they um, they're minnow, so they have a swim bladder, but they do like to hang out on the bottom, and that's why their eyes sit on top of their head, so they can wow. see above them. They're just cool. So you see how much bigger that eye is than like that little yeah. bitty thing. So that's why they're called the big eye chub, hybopsis and blops, which are just I don't know. It's just fun to say. I think it's fun to say. <laughs> so if you thought your job was hard, Meredith has to know what each of these fish are and identify them quickly in all stages of their life, male and female, and in every season. That's when I made a startling discovery. Uh, uh, that's a persina, and I didn't think there was any other persina besides wild perch and snails here. Okay, so we found something exciting. What does this mean? What did we find? Yeah, so we have found a uh, fish called the dusky darter. Uh, this is a fish that is native to the Tennessee River system, of which we are in currently but this is perhaps the first record of this fish being found in this particular stream, South Chickamauga Creek. Uh, so, you know, we, we come here all the time. We're, we've come here several times a year and just wear it out. And even though we do that over and over again, you can still find something new and something cool in places where you think you know everything about. So that's, that's one thing I really love about this job. Ultimately, we have young people watching this show some of them are going to see you and just be so inspired and want to do what you do. What do you have advice-wise to tell them how you got to where you're at? I heard about this really cool place in Knoxville, Tennessee, where I went to school, uh, called Conservation Fisheries Incorporated. And I just called them up and said, hey, do y'all need any volunteers? You know, it's a very small nonprofit, a lot of places like that, like the Tennessee Aquarium, don't always have job openings available. But get your foot in the door, volunteer, and if something opens up and you're right there to take it then you're a good option so I eventually was hired on there and that kind of launched me um, you know to the rest of the the career world um, and even if you don't get a job at the place you volunteer you're gaining really good experience so it's still worth your time and with that it was time to release this little treasure back into the wild we're wrapping up an incredible adventure with a reintroduction biologist and my goodness what a job they have they are working on the wild side and they are loving every minute of it Special thanks to Meredith and Haley for hosting us today and what an incredible life they get to live, saving species every day. Not only did we hit our target species that we were looking for today, but we also found a new record. So huge success for conservation. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you on the next adventure. Yes, swing that hat.